Metal Jesus and I'm back again with another pickups video. These are video games I've added to my collection over the last couple months with the help of some people who have donated to my channel. Really appreciate that. And I can't show you everything, but I'm gonna kind of go through some of the highlights. And also I found some stuff at garage sales. It's actually garage sale season here in Seattle. So I've been going out every Saturday morning and finding some pretty cool stuff. As a matter of fact, some of the stuff I'm gonna show you it is pretty unusual, pretty interesting, at least to me. I mean, it's just stuff you don't normally see in pickups videos. And so I think you guys are gonna like it. Let's take a look. Some of you may have noticed that I recently did a TV plug and play video. And uh, you know, I've recently got into plug and plays. I think they're pretty cool. And several people have donated these to my channel. So I'm gonna start off here with a Mortal Kombat one. This was donated by Tim. And I gotta say, this is actually a pretty impressive plug and play. Um, it's big, it's kind of, it's kind of shaped like, a, uh, like an arcade cabinet almost. It's actually pretty awesome. So I wanna show you guys this, uh, Mortal Kombat plug and play, but that's not all. Reggie, my good buddy Reggie, also donated one. He donated this Super Pac-Man plug and play. Very cool, it looks great and uh, it feels really nice. This is probably one of the better plug and plays that I have in my collection now. It's got like a little uh, little power button here that's kind of like modeled after classic uh, you know, arcade machines, pretty cool. And then I had another plug and play donated and this is the Intellivision one. It's kind of hard to imagine that they would model the Intellivision controller in a way with all those buttons on this, but it seems to work pretty well. Very cool to own this. And so this is getting to the point where I have most of the TV plug and plays that I want. The only one I'm really missing is the Commodore 64 one, and that's pretty hard to find. But what's really cool about it is that if you get that, it actually has a working Commodore 64 burnt into the ROM. And so you can actually mod it to it to connect a real floppy drive, joystick, monitor out. It's actually pretty crazy. So I'm hoping to find one of those maybe at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. While out doing some garage sale hunting, I came across an item I've been looking for for quite a while, and that is the special backlit Game Boy Advance SP. This is the model AGS 101. Now, if you don't know what that is, it may not sound that impressive, but when you compare this model to the original SP, the differences, especially when you're playing games, is night and day. There's so much crisper in this version here. This is the version to get. I mean, if you are go going to jump into collecting for the Game Boy Advance, get the backlit one. It's worth the money. Now, I only paid $3 for this, which is a hell of a deal. Um, I actually got really lucky rolling into this. The, the, the kid also sold me a bunch of games, which I'm gonna show in a second here. But side by side, this is the model to get. Now. This one's a little beat up. It's been used, you know, and uh, that's cool. You know, it works great. But uh, I guess there is a SpongeBob SquarePants version of this that is also backlit. So that's my goal. I want to get that version of it. That would be really cool. Now, if you follow me on Facebook, you know that probably about a month or so ago, I did a pretty amazing trade with a good friend of mine. His name is Matt. And he came across a bunch of pretty old, classic role-playing games for the PC. And that's a part of my collection I'm starting to get really passionate about. And so uh, we, did a, we did a trade officially, although really um, I got the better end of that deal and he was very happy to donate these games basically to me. So I'm gonna show you some of those right now, uh, including this one, which is 24 AD. Now this is a pretty interesting game. It's by Origin Systems. And the reason why this is kind of interesting is that this is the developer who helped make the Ultima series. Um, and this is a post-apocalyptic kind of cyberpunk uh, game. You know, graphically, it's not very impressive anymore, but I like collecting these for the historical aspect of it. And, you know, honestly, the uh, the covers are beautiful. <laughs> they just have this, this awesome artwork on it. And plus, uh, they have manuals in here with Often it's like printed material of like the story and the characters and stuff. So it's actually kind of fun to read this stuff. So he sent me that. Um, also, 
part of the Gold Box series, which is Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday. This is an SSI strategic simulations game here. And again, these are getting kind of hard to find. And um, they're complete and in great condition. Here's a game that I used to own way back in the day, and that is Hard Nova. I guess you would call it like a, uh, it's like a science fiction role-playing game. And uh, it also comes with a strategy guide in here. That's why it's so thick and full, which is kind of cool. And again, great artwork on this. And then also he, he threw in there a copy of Tunnels and Trolls. It's a role-playing game based on a pen and paper D&D game. This is by, this is by uh, New World Computing. I don't think I've ever seen this before. So I don't know why this kind of slipped uh, under my radar when I was you know, collecting back then. Here's a game I'd never seen either called <laughs> uh, Scavengers of the Mutant World. Uh, it, it looks cheesy as all hell, but, and it looks pretty, pretty old. <laughs> 1988. So I don't know, but you know what's interesting? Again, when do you see this game? I, I never run into this out in the wild, so it's very cool. Here's another one. This is Space, Nine, Space 1889. Um, I believe this is also based on a pen and paper game. Now this is a Victorian steampunk role-playing game. So this was kind of a, you know, actually it reminds me of Ultima Adventures. So the Ultima series had kind of a side thing where they went to Mars and then, gosh, what was, there was a the Savage Empire or something like that. So anyways, this is a Victorian RPG and then I walked into a Value Village and found this game and I was like so giddy. I, I never find stuff like this. Full Throttle. Full Throttle is one of the best, if not the best, adventure game ever made. Uh, it, this is so awesome. I'm so excited to have this. It was, it's actually made by Tim Schafer, who also made Brutal Legend and Grim Fandango. And I think he was he was involved in the, uh, the Monkey Island games, stuff like that. So. This is an awesome game. It's a, uh, it's kind of uh, futuristic. You play as Ben, this biker, and uh, it's got an awesome soundtrack in it. So these are some really cool PC games I've added. A little over a month ago, my buddy Drunken Master Paul attended the Seattle Retro Gaming Expo. Unfortunately, I had to work, so I couldn't go. But I sent him in my place to go find interesting and weird games for my collection, and he did not disappoint. I'm not gonna show you everything he found because some of it we're gonna save for I Hate You episodes. But uh, I guess to start off with, he bought these. I don't know why he bought these, but they're, they're, they're interesting. These are the Nintendo Famicom discs. These are floppy discs. These have games on them. And uh, they're all in Japanese and I don't have a, a Famicom, let alone a disc drive, but I guess this will start my collection here. So kind of interesting to, uh, to see these floppy discs that are, well, they're branded Nintendo. So that's kind of interesting. There's a bunch of them here, including I think some blank ones. Kind of interesting. So he got those. Kind of weird. I'm not sure uh, if I'm gonna, you know, add a disc drive to my collection or not, unless I just happen to, you know, fall into one. But uh, another thing he found I thought was pretty interesting. It's a Tandy stand-up game, or I guess tabletop game. It's called Alien Chase, and I think he got this to probably do an I Hate You episode where maybe you know one of us we would basically do two players on a table playing this game probably drunk off our butts because you know it's pretty old but it's still kind of cool to own and looks so retro doesn't it it's actually pretty cool so i mentioned that game boy advance well while i was there this little kid was selling that and also all of his games and so and they're really cheap they're like for like a buck so i bought a bunch of these off of him that day and i'm just going to go through really quickly start with the game boy the original game boy this is james bond 007 for the game boy now I played a little bit of this and this appears to be kind of like an adventure game for James Bond. I am a huge James Bond fan. I love the series. A lot of the games are really awesome for it. So I don't know if this one's any good or not, but I figured that was worth it. Also Kirby Dreamland, Kirby's Dreamland. Didn't own this, now I do. And uh, I know a lot of people talk about this being a total classic on the Game Boy, so it's good to own it. Here is Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Another game that most people say you should own, which is cool. And then I got a copy of Yoshi. So haven't played this yet, but 
I'm actually finding a lot of Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games out at garage sales. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the season and people are upgrading to maybe the 3DS. I have no idea. But also found a copy of Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. And I guess this is like a Pokemon side Tetris thing. I don't know. Paid a dollar for it. Seen anything Pokemon or Nintendo, like official Nintendo, and it's a buck, I will buy it. I also paid a dollar for this, which is Super Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. And a lot of people love this game. I played it a little bit, and uh, I'm not, I think it's basically like the original NES version, but with time trials. Now, don't quote me on that. I haven't played a ton of it yet, and I'm probably gonna capture some footage for this video, but again, uh, I don't actually own a lot of Game Boy Color games, so this is kind of cool to own these. Next, I'm gonna go very quickly through a bunch of just kind of random games I've added to my collection on a bunch of different consoles here. Starting with a game that a fan of my channel recommended I get. Uh, this person was watching my Wii Hidden Gems and thought, oh, this is a total hidden gem. Now, it's not exclusive to the Wii, uh, but it does support the motion controls really well. And that is, you know, when, when he first recommended this, I was like, really? Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I played it a ton. The Adventures of Tintin, the game. Now, the thing is, in North America, Tintin is actually, isn't really popular. Um, the movie came out a couple years ago. It's by Steven Spielberg. And it did okay here, but, you know, overseas, it did phenomenally. So I think most people don't know about this game here because we didn't really watch the movie. Now, the movie's actually really good. And this game is really good. It, it's, a, it's a bunch of things. It's mainly a 2D platformer. And it reminds me of the classic uh, flashback game. Really well made. Um, it also has parts in there where you're driving, where you're fencing. Uh, there's there's all sorts of stuff. It's actually like a pretty in-depth, pretty well made game. And I think the only caveat is that it's it's on the easy side, which personally I don't mind. I mean, sometimes when I'm tired and I have a beer, I just want to play a game. I just want to get through it. And this is not a cakewalk, but it's definitely easy. But I still really like it. So. I don't know, I mean, it's it's also available on other consoles, so check it out if you're looking for something new and fun. Uh, also a fan of my channel, his name's uh, Rami, sent me Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the GameCube. It's cool to own this. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me that this is one of their favorite multiplayer games of all time. Two friends sitting on the couch going through this game is the way to go. So I think uh, me and Drunken Master Paul are gonna have to do that some night. That would be pretty cool. I also picked up some PSP games. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I did pick up one I used to own. Uh, it's SSX on Tour. I love the SSX series. My favorites are Tricky and SSX3. And this is a really interesting version of SSX. It actually is a pretty well-made one for the PSP. And uh, it, the interesting thing about it, it's kind of a best of. So it has levels from Tricky. It also has levels from SSX3 and I think some of the other ones too. So it's actually a pretty pretty big game and uh, pretty neat to have that on my PSP. And then finally, I found this game in a bookstore and I had to buy it on the, on the title alone because it's so bizarre. It's for the original Xbox, it's called Krusty Demons. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking naming a game Krusty Demons, I mean, honestly, that's the nickname that my wife gives my underwear, okay? That's not right. So naming a game like that, that's not right. I don't know, but I bought it, so <laughs> who's to say? But you know what, it's got a guy with a, you know, it's like a Mad Max dude on here and motorcycles. I'm like, Krusty Demons, maybe it's got a heavy metal soundtrack. I have no idea. I'm probably the only person in this hemisphere who owns this game. If you own this game, I wanna know about it. Let me know. While in a local thrift store, I ran across some box Genesis games for cheap. And uh, I don't know about you, when I run across games that I don't own for cheap, I will buy them on the Genesis, including Pugsy. I know nothing about this game. I'm probably going to capture the gameplay footage for this video and play it for the first time. So, and it's funny because Reggie came over and he hadn't heard of it either. So that tells me something. Um, I don't know if it's rare or not, but it's interesting. It looks like a platformer. And again, on the Genesis, I'll buy it. And here's another one. Bubble and Squeak. Again, I have no idea, but I will I will always buy the weird and interesting games as long as they're cheap, because that's kind of what I like. 
Um, kind of fun to sort of take a chance on games like this. So these are the two Genesis games I got. Also while hunting out at garage sales, I ran across a couple original PlayStation games. Found a copy of Dino Crisis. This was actually at the same garage sale as the Game Boy Advance. So you never know. I mean, sometimes you just hit it big. And uh, I didn't own this game. I was kind of surprised. So it's cool to own the original. And again, I, I think I paid a dollar for that. In addition to it, a Resident Evil game I didn't own, Survivor. Now I know not everyone's crazy about this game, but you know, again, if you run across a game and it's a buck and you don't own it and it has Resident Evil in title, you buy it. And another garage sale that I rolled up on, uh, there was a guy there who had a bunch of EA games and they all were brand new, which I was like, that's unusual. You know what I mean? It's like they hadn't been played. So I got to talking to the guy and sure enough, he used to work at EA and he was the producer for Need for Speed uh, 2 and 3 and some of the other ones. And so I was like, are you serious? I love Need for Speed 2, especially on the PC. That was an amazing game. So much fun. Probably one of my all time favorite racing games, especially back in the 90s. So it was really cool to meet that guy. And he's like, well, and I was like, where did you get all these games from? And he's like, well, they're from the employee store. He paid up five bucks for them. And he's like, I'll sell them to you for five bucks. So I only ended up buying one. There's a lot of sports titles, but this is one I didn't own. And that is Brave Fencer Moosh. <laughs> I, don't know, I can't pronounce this. <laughs> I suck. Uh, Brave Fencer Blah, 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 blah. You see the title here. <laughs> um, but anyways, it, it's a cool, you know, square soft game. Paid $5 for it at a garage sale. It's brand new. It has never been played. And uh, I don't know, I thought that was a pretty cool deal. Pretty cool to meet that guy because he's kind of one of my heroes. All right, and then finally, I want to get back to the PC a bit here. And if you remember earlier, I mentioned a trade I did with my buddy Matt. He found a ton of role-playing games and he sent a bunch my way. And he sent a lot of these to me. That's because I've been looking for the Gold Box series. I wanna, I wanna get the entire Gold Box SSI series. Now, if you're not familiar with the Gold Box series, they are hardcore D&D, &D, advanced Dungeons and Dragons games that were made in the late 80s and early 90s. And they mostly use the exact same engine. Essentially, they created this amazing, complex role-playing game engine that was unlike anything at the time. And, uh, and then they modified it as the games went, went along. And what was really cool is that if you started with one, you could often import your, your character into the next in the series. And they broke them out into, well, there's 13 titles total, and they cover different sections of, of the Dungeons and Dragons universe. So anyways, that's a lot of information, but I just wanna kind of preface that I'm looking for those games because they're, they're pretty cool and they're getting hard to find. So he sent me a bunch of them. I'm gonna start off with Pools of Darkness. Yeah, this is a Forgotten Realms game. Death Knights of Kryn. And these aren't really in any order. Uh, they used to be, but I kind of shuffle things around. Uh, the Dark Queen of Kryn. You notice that they all kind of look gold in here. And when you look on the back, they all kind of have a similar look. Treasures of the Savage Frontier. Secret of the Silver Blades. Curse of the Azure Bonds. Eye of the Beholder. This one was awesome. And then I, and well, I included this one in the list. He sent it with, with it as well. And I think it actually predates a little bit. Yeah, it's 1985. And that is The Wizard's Crown. Now, this isn't technically a gold box game, but in, in, in my mind, it, it's just, you know, one of the precursors to it. So I included it in this. Anyways, I just want to show you this collection of games here. Obviously, I have a ways to go if I want to get all 13 of them. I was kind of surprised that I don't have Pools of Radiance. That was actually the very first one. And the one I owned and played and loved to death when I had a Commodore back in the day. I must have lost it years ago in a move. But anyways, um, they're getting hard to come by now and hard to find. I've never seen these out at garage sales ever. So it's pretty cool. All right, well, that's some of the games I've added to my collection over the last couple months. And I want to thank again the people who have sent me games and have donated to my game room. It's so awesome you guys do that. I've actually received quite a bit more that I haven't shown. I just didn't have the time to do it, including magazines and more games. Really interesting stuff. If you guys want to see more of that, like my Facebook page because often I'll take photos and post them there. So 
It's just a kind of another outlet for this stuff. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thank you for subscribing. Take care.